good afternoon everyone am i audible to you yes yeah, you are okay okay yes sir uh, today our speaker our invited speaker is pradipta sham choudhury and this is the last day of our international web lecture series as i announced yesterday that the second phase of the international web lecture series is going to commence on the and uh, many of you have requested me for sending the link through email actually uh, because they do not have access to facebook or do not have any facebook account i would i would like to request you to visit our college website for the link that will be available the link will be available on the website it is ondathana mahavidyalaya o n d a t h a n a mahavidyalaya m a h a v i d y a l a i will i will send the link on the chat box during the session okay so you may note down the web address so when you will go there visit the site you will see a registration link and if you click on the registration link you will see a form fill in the form and automatically you will be registered there will be no registration fee for the second phase and also for the first phase there is no registration fee and uh, the maximum amount the, the maximum number of uh, registered participants the number is 250 including the speaker the members and uh, obviously the other teachers from our college so the registration link will be open for two days two three days i hope because within two three days 250 registration uh, will be sent or more than that because this thing happened with the skb university also they had to stop the registration and if there is more than 250 or lots of registrations requests then we shall open the web lecture and we shall stream it via either youtube live or facebook live or any other interface meaning instead of going for google meet we shall go for a live interface so that everyone can watch the lecture can listen to the lecture can join the web lecture series so without wasting time let me introduce our guest speaker dr pradipto sham choudhury he is an assistant professor of english university of north bengal and his area of interest is south asian studies and gender studies he has edited two volumes rabindranath visited revisited essays on tagore and insiders as outsiders essays on indian widows and widowhood article on the third world feminist issues and queer studies have been published in various national journals pradeep toda is like my elder brother i know him since a long time since my college days so without wasting any uh, any more time let me introduce uh, let me uh, request pradeep toda to deliver his lecture uh, i hope you will enjoy it pradeep toda please hello yes you uh, am i audible yes yes absolutely okay uh, a very good afternoon to all of you and thanks uh, shorab for your kind words uh, let's start so uh, today we will be uh, discussing something on uh, is it okay with my sound my sound is okay yes 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 okay okay, okay. thanks okay. thanks a lot yes okay so today we will discuss something about social distancing and marginalization and the lockdown life but in a different context now uh, with this uh, corona virus and everything we are very much uh, used to with certain phrases like lockdown life and social distancing which are in somewhere other related to the concepts and ideas of marginalization now uh today while discussing social dis distancing and the lockdown life we will bring in the film by deepa mehta that is water and the novelized version of the film by babsa sidhwa that is the same name actually the novel was written uh, following the film script of deepa mehta now social distancing is something uh, a few days back the famous a uh, principle the transgender principle uh, manobi bondobadhyay said regarding social distancing and lockdown life that 
this is something new to the mainstream people but we from the very beginning before the days of corona from the very beginning of our life we who are not in that sense uh the mainstream animals in the society we experience a different type of lockdown life and social distancing the same is applicable in the case of the widows basically the hindu widows in india now i would like to start my discussion by citing a line from the famous shibomohini devi uh, actually kollani datto in her book pinjore boshia quotes from shibomohini devi shibomohini devi became a widow when she was only 10 years old and later she got remarried to sri chondi charan ghosh uh, was a follower of keshab chandra sen and actually vidyasagar initiated the marriage of shibomohini and chondi charan babu so we get this idea with story of shibomohini devi from kollani datto's pinjore boshia so there shibomohini devi writes i will uh, translate uh, the lines all in english also আমার বড় ইচ্ছে বিধবা ভোজন করাই হিন্দুদের কোনো ক্রিয়াকর্মে তাদের তো কোনো জায়গা নেই মানুষ গরুকে দেয় কাককে দেয় শেয়ালকে দেয় গাছকেও দেয় কিন্তু বিধবাদের কিছুই পাওয়ার নেই আই হ্যাভ ও উইশ টু ফিড দ্য উইডোজ দে হ্যাভ নো স্পেস ইন এনি হিন্দু রিচুয়ালস উই ফিড দ্য কাউস দ্য ক্রোস দ্য জাকলস ইভেন দ্য ট্রিজ but the widows have nothing to get now these lines uh, by shibomohini devi actually brings into focus the subhuman condition that were assigned to the widows in the hindu society now here again from manusriti from the dharma shastras chapter 5 verse 156 to 161 here we get that the manusriti says this is in english the widow should be long suffering until death self restrained and chaste a virtuous wife who remains chaste when her husband died goes to heaven a woman who is unfaithful to her husband is reborn in the womb of the jackal so you will see that those who want to transgress the very ideas the very very laws and dictates that were constructed by the society which was controlled by patriarchy that they are assigned or they have to live a subhumanized condition or they will be treated as subhumans though we are now trying to change our ideas about human and subhuman and non-human for for the recent incidents that are going on now in the 2010 census we find that 40 million widows are there and which comprise 10% of the total female population in india so still the picture is the picture is same and the perilous condition of the widows that still persists now my question will be why and this why will be contextualized in the very work of babsa sidwas novel water and as well as the film by deepa mehta that is water now deepa's film was uh, that 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 tried to focus on the lives of the hindu widows and because deepa was trying to bring into focus the perilous condition of the widows who were relegated to the ashrams in brindavan and varanasi so that was a very common custom that we find in the hindu societies in the society that that when a woman becomes a widow and if she is uh young so she will be clean shaven her 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 head will be shaved and she had she 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 had to wear white sari she will be prescribed certain foods so she cannot eat certain things and at the final she is generally dumped either into the puja ghar she will uh, spend the rest of her life worshiping or spending her life in the puja ghar or she will be sent to the packed off to an uh, avido ashram either in varanasi or brindavan so deepa mehta's film actually wanted to focus the lives of the widows in this ashrams in varanasi and brindavan but then he changed the story because there were certain threats that were coming from different corners of from uh, from different hindu communal organizations and the shooting was stopped in the middle because of this disturbances later deepa went to 
uh, Sri Lanka and shot the rest of the film. And she had to change certain names, certain names of the places and characters and certain situations also. So Deepa had to, uh, had to, uh, what, what to say? Uh, she, she was compelled to, 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 to bring certain uh, adjustments in her agenda because otherwise she would, wouldn't be given the permission to, to shot the film. Okay, so that is the thing. So this kind of pressures and this kind of, of operations are still there. And one who, who is interested in bringing into focus the perilous conditions of the widows, they are either uh, uh, they are, they are, uh, oppressed in, in, in discursively or physically or in any other ways, sometimes legally also. Now, Deepa's particular movie, Water, that was taken up by Sidwa, and Sidwa made certain changes in the story. And what was that change? That we see that in the film uh, Water, the, the, the film starts with Chuhia and her old husband, who was in the, uh, in the cremation ground. And we find that Chuhia was undertaking, and, and she, she was uh, under, she, she was given certain, she was brought into certain rituals of, of becoming a widowhood, that is certain sort of rites to passage. So that is the thing that she was having her head uh, shaven and, and she was given a white sari to wear. So all these things, the, the, the film started with this kind of uh, uh, scenes. But in the novel, we find that Bapsa Sidwa starts the novel with Chuya amidst the lush green uh, atmosphere and she is a very little girl in a village and she is playing with a little puppy. So the novel wants to focus on the changes that happens in the life of a woman before, after she becomes a widow. So this marriage and the death of the husband and the consequent widowhood, these are the certain phases that a woman sometimes has to pass through. And that actually, uh, actually marks the position that a woman faces, that what a woman enjoys in the society, how she is treated, how she is assigned a, 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 a social role, and what are the consequences that a woman faces once while, while facing and while experiencing certain halls of the patriarchal uh, uh, patriarchal uh, practices. Now, uh, we see that Chukia, uh, in the novel, Chukia is a little girl who is playing with her uh, a puppy. And later we see that Chukia's father, Somnath, comes and, and she, he starts discussing about her marriage and that he has got a, a, a good relation uh, that a man is there, but he's very old. And Shomnath wants to wants you here to get married to that old man, despite that, uh, that, that, that difference of age. And she says that uh, what is interesting uh, here that the, that the words of Shomnath that we find, that Shomnath says that a girl becomes a woman and the girl attends an identity, an identity only when she is married. So without a husband, a girl has got no social position of her own. And when a girl gets married, she becomes a Sobhagya Shali and Sumangali. Now, this particular terms of Sumangali and Sobhagyavati or Sobhagya Shali, all these terms are attributed to a woman to show that how a woman can be beneficial to the society in general. So if a woman is so bhagyavati and so mangali, so mangali means one who is beneficial or one who has the power to benefit the society. But without a husband, a woman is never a so mangali and a so bhagyavati. So neither an unmarried woman is Sumangali and Sobhagyavati. An unmarried woman only becomes or only acquires those qualities when she gets married. And nor the widow who loses her husband remains Sumangali and Sobhagyavati. Now, what is the, the, the politics behind this assignment of certain attributes to the women that Sumangali and Subhagyavati. That is, 
what is our idea about womanhood a woman becomes a woman so all these things we find uh, uh, from from uh, sorry, sorry, so all these things we find from simone de beauvoir that sex is uh, something biological and gender is something very social but with the passage of time the more we became acquainted with gender uh, studies and, and and the gender discourses we find that neither sex not gender is something which is very much physical or something which is in it all these we acquire with our uh, our our uh, Uh, our our relationship with our uh, activities and performances within the society so a woman could is something that is attributed to the woman by the society uh, uh, the patriarchal society actually makes woman a woman with certain qualities that she is a sumangali she is a subhagyavati otherwise otherwise the woman can become or the woman can come up as a threat to the society and the same thing happens when we find that the woman loses her husband when her husband dies when her husband dies the woman becomes an individual self who has nobody to control when a woman is young she is controlled by her father then the brother father or brother after marriage the husband and uh, when she becomes old the son looks after the woman but when a woman becomes a widow and when she is very young and a widow then what happens the woman becomes an individual identity who is not controlled by a male member of the society and that becomes something a sort of threat to the society because the sexuality of the woman remains open and there is nobody to control the female body as well as the female sexuality and that's why the widow is treated a widow and especially young widow is treated as <coughs> a social threat to patriarchy and that's why we find there's these practices of sati that a woman when she is young when she a, a young woman when becomes a widow what happens she was uh, given the 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 order to have to go to shahamaran or she had to go for the sati because the young woman sexuality is a threat to the society now sati the custom of sati that was abolished uh, with the help of rammohan and what happened later we see that when the sati custom was abolished the 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 sending of the woman to the ashrams became more prominent because of if a woman lives within the very household that may create certain problems and disturbances within the patriarchal structures and spaces of household that's why a woman should be sent to the ashram that is a sort of marginalized space that is assigned to the woman and in the story we find that chuhia was sent to the to the ashram in ravalpur and then the story starts and what is that story and the story and then the story starts that chuhia no longer one re remains a very stupid widow so chuhia once started questioning questioning the very ideas that were actually imposed by patriarchy upon the hindu widows and here we see that that what he asks when she was taken to the ashram she asks her father uh father where i am going his father says your husband is dead you are a widow now to hear asks for how long baba now this particular thing he he is actually taking this concept of widowhood as a temporary phase that after the death of our near and dear ones we all we all mourn for a certain period of time say for 13 days for one month or 15 days or something but all these phases are temporary phases when our uh, society and religion <coughs> expects us to wear certain kinds of clothes and certain types of foods we are are given certain rituals to perform but see, to hear here questions that for how long she has to remain a widow is this widowhood a sort of temporary phase 
but the question is remains unanswered because a woman's period of mourning after the death of her husband is a permanent it's it's a permanent thing she had to mourn permanently unlike the other members of the family and chuhia starts questioning the very system with this basic question for how long baba and then she questions that for how long i have to stay here that here means the very ashram and that space which is assigned to the widow is it the, the space only assigned for the women the widows if the husband dies and the woman becomes a widow what happens to the male members of the society are there male widows so this is the second question that we find chuhia is asking to the other inmates of the society other inmates of the ashram where she says where is the ashram for the male for the male widows but interestingly enough we find that there is no such thing as a male widow we have the very english word widower but i don't know there is any bengali word for a male widow so my question is is there any sort of a uh, sort of a uh, discursive difference between the word widower and male widow so these particular questions was actually that questions were actually posed by chutia so what is the fate for the male widows do they really face the same thing as she is facing after losing her husband and when she questions this when she asked this question there was sidwa writes there was a stunned silence and then the pandemonium broke out so they were she, she asked this question amidst the other inmates of the ashram <coughs> and what was the reaction of the uh, other members a chorus of scolding erupted from the shocked widows good god what a horrible thing to say god protect our men from such a fate may your tongue burn <coughs> pull out her tongue and throw it in the river i'll do it the shriek like harpies just a minute i'll this so it is the other uh, other inmates of the ashram they are the very person who actually they are protesting against these questions posed by chukia why because they are very much indoctrinated to the patriarchal ideologies that actually dictate the woman to 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 have to 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 be to be dumped into the widow ashram to have the fate of the widow with certain with a good lot of proscriptions and many restrictions and such such things so all these things sidwa is trying to to focus in the novel that when chuhia starts questioning the very other members of the ashram the other widows they are protesting so but chuhia is i have said earlier she is not no such a uh, stupid widow and she goes on questioning and later on we will find that chuhia is getting other widows by her side despite uh, being a very small girl she is the person she is the the very identity the very person who starts questioning and let her get supporters behind her back now there is another widow character in the novel madhumati now madhumati is a widow and the and the head of that ashram now the story of madhumati that is a very problematic story madhumati starts treating to here very affectionately she says that <clears throat> you poor child how i feel for you i was also very young when my bastard husband dies just just note the word she is using when my bastard husband died and complaints against the social system to the yuna madhumati has a friend the yuna gulabi and she she tells when i became a widow i boldly asked for a part of my dowry and some ancestral property which i could leave off they took care of me all right the two bastards raped me for a week i was shown and beaten and taken 20 miles into the wilderness and discarded 
Now, this is the story of Madhumati. Madhumati, who becomes the very agent of imposing certain patriarchal dictates uh, for the widows, who appears, apparently appears as an oppressor who oppresses the widows, who actually performs certain rites which makes the lives of the widows perilous in the ashram. She also has her own story. Now, when we get the story of Madhumati, the question that comes up, why she subscribes to the patriarchal doctrines that oppresses the women? Then can I come to the conclusion that Madhumati was not that much courageous like that of Chuhia? What Chuhia can question, Madhumati cannot. And Madhumati had to subscribe, had to conform to the patriarchal ideologies. And then when she conformed, she became the master, the head of the widow ashram. And we find there are innumerable stories of various widows who had to face the same problem. And later they became the machinery, the agent, the accomplice of the patriarchal ideology. The friend of Madhumati, we find, is the Yuna friend of Madhumati, Gulabi, and who is actually a helping hand of Madhumati, who also helps Madhumati to run the prostitute business within the ashram. And now this is a very interesting story. So we have a very short period of time, but I will try to touch the various issues here. Now, this is a very interesting thing that the same society which disallows any woman who becomes a widow to have to, to, to perform and celebrate her sexuality, who is proscribed to, to, to enjoy the, the sexual pleasures, certain foods, wearing certain dresses, which are actually uh, related to the sexuality of the woman, that particular system also forces the widows to perform the sexual rights as a prostitute. Why? Now, here we will find that the issue becomes much more problematic. The economic condition is also a very important feature that we find here. Now, these ashrams were actually run by certain rich men who were from the higher rung of the society, the Sikhs, the Brahmins, the Zamindars and people. And the widows used to collect some arms while they singing bhajans and, 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 and they used to live a very frugal life. Now for the overall running of the ashram, they need the, pat the patronization of certain rich men. And these rich people, they sometimes use certain young widows as prostitutes. They were sent to the quotas of those rich men and they were enjoyed. They, they, they work as prostitutes, they bring money and the ashram is run. Now, what actually problematizes the issue is that, what I've said earlier, that sexuality is the thing which becomes something very disturbing for the society and again, it is something which is also exploited by the society for certain reasons. Ultimately, the widow remains a helpless creature within the society. And why this widowhood? Because the women were told from the very, <clears throat> in, in, in 19th century also we find that there was a general belief that if the woman gets education, she will become a widow. Because the widowhood is something which is a very fatal and very frightening thing for a woman. A woman when not even ready to hear the very word widowhood. And that's why it was very easy for the system to, 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 to inflict the very idea that if you, if you are educated, if you are exposed to education or English, which becomes a very symbol of Western education and enlightenment, you will become a widow. So all these things were there, which actually were instrumental in bringing the life of the woman to the very margins of the society. And what we were telling about the, the, the prostitution and the widow remarriage, the widow remarriage was there within the Hindu custom, as we see in certain forms of Leviratic marriages in northern part of India, where when a husband dies or when a husband used to die, the woman 
the, the, the wife was married to the very close, uh, the brother of the husband. And the same thing we find in a different from in Mahabharata also. Actually, Draupadi was married to five brothers. So they have certain different political and cultural connotations also. But it has also a connection with the idea of Leviratic marriages. When a woman gets married to the brother of the husband after the husband dies. And that's why we have the word Devar, means Dityobor or the second husband, who remains as a stepney to the woman. But here also we see that the woman is never given the, 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 the independence and the choice to choose her own life partner. A woman has to get, the woman never marries, but the woman is, woman is married and she has to marry to someone which has been assigned by the society, which has been approved by the society. And that is the thing. So widow remarriage was something which Bintashago started in 1856. It was not, not something related to Levidatic marriages, but it was very open and it was a very modernist uh, thing that Bintashago wanted to start, but they also had their own problems. We will find in different uh, documents that many uh, widow remarriages were done and people who were apparently very educated people, they they were, in, they, they were interested in widow remarriage only to get a lump sum amount from Vidyashago. Vidyashago used to collect money for the uh, uh, grooms of the widow remarriage and to, 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 to get established in the society as a very modernist, enlightened person that, yes, I am the person who has remarried a widow. So I have come up as a Masiha, I'm as, a, as a rescuer. In the story, in the, in the novel of Bonkin Chandra Chattopadhyay, Krishnakanti will we find there is a character that is Horolal. Horolal is actually threatening his father, Krishnakanto, and later Rohini also, that the, he is actually using the very concept of widow remarriage. He says that if you don't give me the, the lion's share of your property, I will remarry a widow. And because Krishnakanto was a very traditional man, who was a very orthodox type of man, he, it, it came to him as a thought, sort of threat. But later, he did not care for it. And the same Korolal used the very concept of widow remarriage as a, something to lure Rohini, that if you steal the, 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 um, the documents and, and, and the, the will of Krishnakanto, I will remarry you. You know Vidyashagura started widow remarriage and all these things. So widow remarriage was something which started with a very, uh, very big uh, 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 ideas. And it, it started with so many uh, promises. But actually, it turned out to be something which uh, became a, uh, an instrument for the apparently educated, enlightened uh, gentry of Kolkata, the Babu Shaman, who wanted to get established as an enlightened person. So, uh, Still, we have 40 million widows. That is the story. Now, uh, another point that I would like to point out here is the food and the um, uh, food as a part of culture and how the kitchen or the Bengali Hessian becomes the very site of kitchen politics. Here we will see that uh, in an essay by Edmund Leach, the essay is Oysters, Smoked Salmon and Stilton Cheese. There we see that uh, Leach writes, the significant thing about such categories is that they are accorded very different levels of social prestige. That is food. Food is accorded very different levels of social prestige. Some foods are appropriate only to men, others only to women. Some foods are forbidden to children. Some can be eaten only on ceremonial occasion. So therefore, Leach says that cooking is thus universally a means by which nature is transformed into culture and categories of cooking are always peculiarly appropriate for use as symbols of social differences. So food becomes, or the very concept of cooking, the very activity of cooking becomes a very thing that divides, that creates cultural hierarchy and that divides a society. So widows were not allowed 
to eat certain foods. Certain foods are there which should be consumed by men. In certain foods are there that the children should not eat. When we were uh, children, we were not allowed to drink tea. And later when we grew up, we were given coffee and tea. So this kind of prescriptions and proscriptions are there within the society. Now what happens, there is a character in the water, uh, in the novel Water as well as in the film, that is Bua, that is Chuhia's Bua, who always dreams of eating sweets, but she was never given sweet to eat. And here we find that certain proscriptions actually are the, are the instruments with which the widows were marginalized. And here, I would like to quote from Rukkini Baya Nair, who says that because the widows were marginalized even within the kitchen space, even within the very domestic space. Should I, should I end now? Am I taking time? Or can I continue for five more minutes? You may continue. Hello? Okay. okay. <laughs> you may continue. Oh. Okay. Now we find, uh, sorry. That we find Rupkini Bharana says that because the widows were prescribed certain types of foods, they actually strategically took up this prescription as an as an as an as an uh, what to say as a power with which they created certain palatable Bengali dishes from the vegetable odds and ends. Now here we will also I would like to go back to Krishnakante Vil and Rohini again that Bunkim Chandra describes Rohini as Rondhone She Draupadi Vishesh. Rohini was a very good cook. Now, Rohini was actually compared to the character of Draupadi. Now, if we focus on the character Draupadi, we will find that Draupadi was the wife of five husbands. And Draupadi was the character in, in the epic who despite various operations that we see, she was the character who could celebrate and who was actually successful in, in celebrating his sexuality. Okay, and she was beyond those social rigorous rules which uh, prescribe monogamy and other sexual restrictions. Now, a widow, actually, I don't know, Bankim Chandra did it consciously or unconsciously, but Bankim Chandra did it. She described, she compared Rohini with Draupadi in the context of cooking. So cooking is something which came up as a very powerful instrument, as a very powerful instrument of recuperation. And the widows, by cooking, by, by inventing certain palatable dishes, you know the name of the Bengali name, the chotchuri and chichki and all these vegetable dishes, which came up as a recuperative contribution of the widows to the Bengali cookery, who were brutally treated within the society. The society which marginalized them, they answered back with the meager things or the meager amount of the meager quality of things, the meager amount of food or vegetables that they used to get by ans they answered back with their own invention. So this is also something which uh, actually becomes very relevant in the discussion of the videos. Now, coming to the end, we will see that I was talking of social distancing and marginalization and lockdown life. So all these three things I brought within our, uh, that is uh, uh, within brackets, because the widows who were not allowed to do certain things, they still have this lockdown life and social distancing. But within this socially distanced existence and within this lockdown uh, life, they still tried their best to celebrate their life with whatever they have as means of living. And here in Water, I would like to end by pointing out that we find there are two characters. One is uh, uh, a character, um, Shakuntala. And Shakuntala was the woman who comes up as the mother of Chuhia. Chuhia's filiative mother, Bhagya, who, who had actually no voice to, to control the life of Chuhia. She actually 
conform to the wishes of Chukia's father that whatever you are telling you are my cups and whatever you are telling or whatever you are but uh, you are you are uh, deciding that is okay I will I will I will conform to that but Chukia gets a new affiliative mother within the ashram who actually takes her to the path of of truth who takes her to the path of life and in the end we see it is Shakuntala who is taking Chukia to the Gandhi woman, not Gandhi, but the Gandhi woman. So that is a different type of, uh, that, that, that will bring in more uh, uh, discussion about Gandhi and Gandhi woman, who actually takes her to the woman who was a follower of Gandhi. And Chukia starts her life towards, with her journey towards truth. So this is something I can say uh, about widowhood if I get uh, more time, uh, later I, I can discuss the things and uh, let us have more discussions to questions and answers because uh, it's, is it okay sure yes yes do you want to do, do you want to uh, one uh, uh, further to say something further do you want more time no it's okay okay so now the floor is open for the audience i think it's a very interesting topic for discussion and uh, everyone present in the webinar is familiar to these things. So uh, I would like to request the audience to ask the questions, or if you have any suggestion to add on, you can go. Hello. Yes. Hello. 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 So I have already, I I have already sent my question in my chat box. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah. In two, in two parts actually. Uh, uh, in Himachal Pradesh, we are seeing at some places that the in-laws have remarried their daughter-in-law and sent her to her new husband's and daughter-in-law's house as their own daughter. For example, there is a village named Bat Kalyan, but under Haroli subdivision, Una HP. Okay. Okay, and so what happened in Himachal Pradesh that the uh, in-laws have remarried their daughter-in-law and son. Huh. That that is something. Yeah. Which hello. Is hello. Hmm. hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. It, it has another part. A part. Yeah. It's a yeah. it's a B part. It has A part. Just a minute. Do you see that such type of exploitation widows still uh, exploitation widows still exist in our society? Any example? Do you think that even education is not helping such ladies? Yeah, education. Uh, hello, hello, da You are not audible. Hello, hello. Hello, Pradeep Tudha. Hello. Okay, I've, I've uh, replugged it again. I've unplugged and then. Yes. Hello, am I audible now? Yes, yes. Yes, yes sir. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, huh. uh, so, actually, uh, what you have said that there are some cases where we find that the in laws are making arrangements to get their in daughter in laws uh, married and they're sending their daughter in laws to the new house as their daughters. That is something very much commendable. But my point was that. Is there any kind of social
uh, I think uh, I think you may proceed without the headphone. It okay. will be still okay. Uh, if you proceed, uh, uh, there is a problem okay. with the headphones. Yes. Am I, am I audible? Yes. Yes. Perfectly. Perfectly. Yeah, I'm audible, na? Okay. Yes. So, so what I'm telling that the precedence that uh, Sri Supal Ji has given, uh, that is quite commendable. That. Uh, some in laws that we have seen in a famous serial a few years back that is Sarsvi Kavi Bakuti, and there we found that Mihi when Mihi Virani died, so their uh, the Mihi's family was very to uh, remarry Tulsi Virani to the friend of 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 uh, um, uh, Mihi. But what we saw at the end that Mihi Virani came back, that did not happen. Because there are certain problems with the cultural, social, and religious sanctions. Those who are really enlightened, those who want to, who are really progressive in their attitude, they are doing this. But the problem lies with the social customs and traditions. Still, we have no such uh, legal, uh, legal sanctions or the cultural and religious sanctions of certain marriages, and that's why. We find that these are a very few. These are just stray incidents that are happening. Happening, but what about the general condition of the 40 million widows who comprise 10 percent of the total population of Indian women? I have seen certain posts and tweets in Facebook as well as in Twitter that a woman who comes from a certain religious belief, she says that. This modernist agenda has no right to subsume our cultural traditions. Sati is something which has a great cultural tradition, and they have no right to stop this. Still, in 2020, we are having this kind of messages that people, or women especially, they are actually endorsing, promoting the custom of Sati. So what uh, Segalji has said, that is, that, is, that is quite commendable. And we want more such cases to come up. But still, the problem lies. Until and unless there is a general awareness, there will, the problem will not be solved. Actually, the thing is, marginalization is something. And the minority problem is something which is very much deeply uh, embedded within our social structure. So if I say, if I, if, I, if I say that I'm very much sympathetic to the marginalized people, one who is marginalized, one who is a minority, whether he's a sexual minority or a religious minority or a social minority, any kind of minority, I'm very, very sympathetic. That even shows my sense of superiority. So the better thing is, the better thing is we should try to erase any sense of marginalization and any sense of minority. So that is the thing. So what Sir has said, uh, Seg Segal Ji has said, that is quite commendable. But that is not something which, which is very much very common. So we want such things to come up. And these things can be taken up as precedences. Education is something, uh, there's another question. Often it is seen that the, uh, just a minute. I mean, often it is seen that the elderly woman in the house have become instrumental in regardless practice of widowhood within the uh, domestic premises. It is the traditional training which, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that what I have said regarding the, uh, while discussing the character of Madhumati. While discussing the character of Madhumati, I said that why Madhumati subscribe to the patriarchal uh, uh, dictates and the patriarchal discourses. So these women actually were not that much courageous and um, any problem so actually these women were not that much courageous to question had they been able to question the system they would have done that without being able to to raise their voice they rather conform because they found that is more uh, easy thing to do because we have seen that when madhumati is talking about her husband one one who is leaving a life of widowhood for the death of her husband. She's not doing it of her own. She has been forced to do that. That's why whenever she is referring to her husband, she's using the word bastard. That when my bastard husband died, 
that that means that she has no respect and love for her husband why that is not there, there is no love and respect for her husband because she has been forced to live that kind of life this enforced widowhood is something nobody wants this life of prescription nobody wants this life of restriction if we take it more logically a man don't don't we think that a, a, the mother and father loves her uh, their son very much is very dear to the parents but what happens when the that particular person dies only her wife has to lead the life of widowhood and if widowhood is something very natural we would have seen that after becoming widow a woman actually stops menstruating so nature actually does not want this widowhood it is not something very naturally sanctioned it is something which is socially constructed and raising the basic question had it been something very natural uh, am i audible yes 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 sir yes sir yes, sir. Yes, sir. Something very natural we would have seen that when a woman becomes a widow he will have a, she will have a sort of menopause but still she retains her sexuality her fertility but it is a society which actually imposes this kind of restrictions because the widow's sexuality a woman who is un, who remains uncontrolled who remains an uncontrolled the who, whose body remains an uncontrolled uh, territory is threat and when something comes up as a threat that thing also becomes that thing also becomes very interesting to some people okay so that's why uh, these issues are still relevant relevant in 2020 i would have been happy that after five more years i won't be i won't get the chance to discuss anything like widows and widowhoods uh, I, I i wish that some time that that day will come okay okay is there any more question any more question from the audience and shoda you can share yes. my phone number with them also uh, if if anybody wants okay. uh, if they want they can speak to me also that's not a problem okay so i think um, i was okay with my discussion hello hello uh sir am i audible yeah you are audible uh sir uh, you talked about uh, some bengali uh, dishes like chechki and uh, chochori uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you said that uh, it became a sign of protest for the uh, widow mm -hmm. so um, will you please analyze that how uh, how come uh, such foods it uh, it became a kind of a weapon for the uh, widow to okay moitri protest against moitri yes sir moitri yes sir Have you ever tasted chichki and chotchuli? Yes, sir. Definitely. Do you, like Do you like it? I like it very yes, much. Yes, kind of. Yes, sir. I like it very much. My 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 grandmother, my my Thakuma, my grandmother, she used to cook wonderful chichki and chotchuli. And my mother, me, my father, and other members, we used to wait when my Thakuma will cook. Thakuma means grandmother will cook those things. so that these plates were so palatable and just think of the ingredients they used for cooking those uh, chechki and chochori so what rukini bhai na said that because they were marginalized to the certain corners of the kitchen niramish kishel and amish kishel the veg the, the the veg corner and the non veg corner of the kitchen the kitchen was also divided so you know that kitchen is generally uh, called a women space the female space the actually patriarchy assigns the kitchen as the female space the woman used to spend the most of her life now we all cook i also cook sometimes so that is different but generally it is assigned as a female space so that is also uh, divided between the veg corner and the non veg corner so the those who are married women they can go to the non veg corner as well as to the veg corner because they have certain social sanctions but a widow who comes up as a threat to the society 
she is even marginalized within the female space with certain odd and end uh, ingredients. And with that, they are cooking something which becomes much more tasty sometimes than the non-veg dishes. So okay. if you ask me uh, uh, to choose between biryani and chachuri, sometimes I would have chosen uh, chachuri. It is so tasty and it's sort of good for health. Okay, so all these are some peripheral discussions and many things will come up. Hmm. Yes, okay. yes. So uh, I think we should end now, Shuru. Thank you, sir. Uh, let us check if there are any, any more questions. Uh, do you have any more question, audience? I think yes, I think there is no more question. Uh, now we shall start the valedictory session. Our honorable principal, sir, Dr. Vijay Khan Dube is with us and he will address the valedictory session. So I would like to request, sir, valedictory session. Sir, are you there? Okay, just... <coughs> Okay, there is some technical problem and he's rejoining. Uh, but before he rejoins, uh, let me introduce the man. Uh, Dr. Vijaykan Dube, uh, he, he, he actually belongs to the Department of English. Uh, and it is a matter of great pride for us that our principal uh, is a teacher of that English literature and culture studies. But he has another identity. He is a very famous Indian English poet also. and. Uh, some of his poems have been published in some international journals, magazines, anthologies. And he, uh, his interviews have been published uh, in, the, in, the, in the history of English, Indian English literature books in some of them. You will find his name, Dr. Vijay Kandube. So I personally requested our principal sir so recite, to recite uh, any one of his poems. Uh, I think he has joined. Sir, are you there? Yes. Huh? Hello, sir. I request everyone uh, to wait just one minute. If you... Okay, while you join, uh, let me uh, anou let me make an announcement. Uh, e certificates will be issued to every participant who has registered by sending their emails, uh, designation, and phone number. Some of you have not sent your designation to me. Only the name and phone number have been sent. 
So it's been a bit difficult for us to know whether you are a faculty member or a scholar or a student. So uh, those who have not yet sent me your uh, Z designation, even if you are a student, you have to write uh, the name of your college and the same you are at present pursuing so that in the certificate it shows. Okay. And the certificate will start issuing from tomorrow. If you do not get the certificate uh, till 15, you may contact me personally by sending me email that sir I registered, but I did not receive the certificate, but not before 15. Okay. There are lots of people. So it will take time to send the e certificates one by uh, one after another. Okay. Uh, hello, sir. Are you with us? Okay, I think there is some serious technical problem. So we have to call it a day. But before that, I would like to thank all the participants from the core of my heart. Uh, that was the first attempt, this, this international web lecture series from our college, uh, the Ondathana Mahavidyalaya and the Department of English. We never had thought that so many of you would show uh, true interest in it. And we are really awestruck to find you uh, every day listening to all the lectures with the utmost devotion, asking questions, exchanging views. I salute to you, all the audience. It was really uh, lucky for us. So thank you very much. And I would like to request you to attend the second phase of the International Web Lecture Series because some of the phenomenal speakers will be there. Uh, in the second phase of this uh, international Web lecture series that is going to commence uh, on and from 12th of June. Uh, so, Pradeep Toda, thank you very much, Dada. Thank uh, you. Yes, thank yes, you. Uh, yes, for uh, giving us your time and delivering the uh, engaging like lecture. Speech. Yes. That was uh, a very engaging one, and thanks for the questions also. Okay. Uh, thanks for the questions. Welcome, welcome. Uh, does anyone want to say anything regarding the six day program? Or should we call it a day? Few. Does any uh, audience, any member from the audience, any participant? No. Okay. Uh, so let us call it a day. Thank you very much. I think. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. The whole semi whole seminar webinar was a bouquet of different flowers. <laughs> Thank you. Very much. Thank you very and much. And beautiful sir. flowers. Yeah. Yes. Okay, welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We hope to see you in the next phase also. Uh, okay. Goodbye. I will surely join. Okay. Give us leave. Goodbye.